It is important for all students to build strong thinking and problem solving skills. Because thinking is not easily observed, students often struggle with effective problem solving. Think aloud strategy involves verbally communicating one's own thinking process as he or she works through the problem. This gives the student a visual representation of the steps taken to effectively solve the problem. The think aloud strategy can be used by teachers for both instruction and as a formative assessment tool. Where the think aloud strategy may provide its greatest benefits is in a culturally diverse classroom with a large number of English language learners. ELL students may be left with gaps due to unfamiliar language or symbols, thus making the problem solving all the more challenging. Think aloud activities can be done in two ways. First, teachers can think aloud while teaching a concept. This allows the students to see and hear what the teacher is doing as well as what the teacher's thought process is. This allows for a deeper understanding of the problem rather than the student just memorizing a set of sequential steps. If the students have a better understanding of the thought process that is required for each question, they have a better chance of succeeding when they tackle the problems on their own. Also, when students are struggling with a certain aspect of the problem, it will be easier for them to pinpoint the exact area they are having difficulties with. This is helpful for the teacher to determine areas she may have to spend more time on. The second way Think Aloud can be used is to have students think aloud. Teachers can have students attempt a problem on their own. Then they can bring the class together and ask a student to solve the problem in front of the class and explain each step he takes as well as why he is taking each step. Next, the teacher will ask the class if anyone else has another solution to the problem. Because everybody thinks and learns differently, there will likely be a student who has an alternative method. That student will also do a think aloud to solve the problem. This allows all students to see the problem solved in multiple ways, which gives them a greater chance of understanding at least one of the methods. This also allows the teacher to understand the student's thought process, which allows her to pinpoint any common errors students are making as well as common misconceptions. These two think aloud activities can be used in a variety of subjects. However, it is particularly helpful in math. This is because math is heavily based on problem solving and problem solving techniques. Therefore, there are usually multiple ways of viewing and solving problems. In a culturally diverse classroom, our goal is to help all students learn, even if their learning style is different from our own. By using the Think Aloud strategy, we are allowing students to learn more from each other. With more variety in teaching and learning comes more chances that student will understand the material. Although mathematics is said to be a universal language, it is still very difficult for an English language learner. This is because the word problems are often worded in ways that make it difficult for all students to decipher what the question is asking. If a student is not comfortable with the English language, it turns a problem that only uses basic math skills into a vocabulary or English problem as well. There are also various contexts embedded in math problems that some students may not understand. Something that we may think is common knowledge may be foreign to students who have had experiences different from our own. Look at the following question for example. Bob has a full deck of cards. If he chooses one card at random, what is the probability that he will choose A, a red card, B, a face card, and C, a seven of hearts? This question implies that students know how many deck cards are in a deck, the fact that a deck consists of four suits and two colors, and what a face card is and how many there are in a deck. A student may have a good understanding of probability, but being unfamiliar with the deck of cards hinders their ability to solve the problem. It may also cause the student to become frustrated and give up. By using a think aloud, the teacher is forced to address these assumptions and clarify where the information is coming from. A teacher solving this problem in front of the class may assume that all students know there are 52 cards in a deck and use the number 52 to solve the problem. This could leave some students confused and thinking to themselves, where did that number come from? However, if the teacher were using the think aloud strategy, he would explain where he got 52 from and why he was using it. Many math problems have underlying assumptions that teachers may not recognize as common problems. Think aloud activities force the teacher to justify each step and make all the embedded information clear. It also allows the teacher to formatively assess stu whether students can pick out the needed information or if they have difficulties decoding the problem. The following is an example of a math problem and two different ways to solve it, both done by using the think aloud method. 
By showing students the thinking process used for each solution, it allows various types of learners the opportunity to learn. First is the algebraic method, and the second is the visual method for problem solving. Both are sped up for a little enjoyment. Cindy collects ants, lizards, and worms. She has more worms than ants and lizards combined. Altogether, there are 12 heads and 26 legs. How many lizards does Cindy have? So first, we're going to start by writing out things that we know and creating some variables for the animal. A, A for an ants, L for lizards, and W for worms. And from the question, there's a lot more, a lot more information given. Um, it says there are 12 heads in total. Every animal has to have one head. So it will give us the equation ants plus lizards plus worms equals 12. There are 26 legs in total. And since worms don't have legs, um, ants have 6 legs. So 6a lizards have 4 legs equals 26 total legs. Now it also says that there are more worms than ants and lizards combined. So by that we can we know that ants plus lizards is less than worms. Now we have the three equations. One, two, and three. We need to use these in order to solve the question. So first we're going to take equation number one and number three and make some things equal to each other. So ants plus lizards plus worms again equals 12. Ants plus lizards is equal to 12 minus worms. And then we also can see that ants plus lizards is less than worms. So with ants plus lizards on both on the left-hand side of the equation, we combine the two equations to give us 12 minus w is less than worms. And this simplified gives us so one, so two worms and six is less than worms. So there are more than six worms. Uh, Sydney has more than six worms. So now, that being said, looking back at this equation here, there are more than six worms. It has to be uh, less than five ants plus lizards. Or at the greatest five. So then, we can use the second equation in order to solve for lizards by rearranging this formula to get write the third equation over here using this in place of A in equation number 2. Then I multiply the 6 in, get 30. And this all simplified down gives me 2L equals 4. That means that L is equal to 2 and she has 2 lizards. Now we can even do a check on this one. Using the same equation, substitute the 2 back in. And I'll do that again. So, here we get 18 plus 8. Also equals 26. And that is correct. And then we after that we just need a final statement. How many lizards does Sydney have? We've checked and we know that Sydney has two lizards.